Racism in the U.S. Military, Colonel Charles Young and Major General Robert W. Smith. We'll take a look at what part racism played in the career of these two military officers. Colonel Charles Young was the third black graduate from the United States Military Academy, the first black U.S. National Park Superintendent, the first black military attache, the first black man to achieve the rank of colonel in the United States Army, and the highest ranking black officer in the regular army until his death in 1922. Major General Robert W. Smith III retired from the U.S. Army Reserve after 34 years of service, earning the Distinguished Service Medal, Legion of Merit, two Bronze Stars, and three Meritorious Service Medals. He serves as an Air Defense and Infantry Officer from the detachment to division levels in key staff positions with combat services during the Vietnam War. Because he was a reserve officer, which means he was a part-time soldier, he also had a full-time job at the Ford Motor Company, which he retired after 32 years as a finance executive. Colonel Young's military career spanned from 1889 when he graduated from the United States Military Academy until his death in 1922. During that time, the U.S. Army was segregated, which meant that Colonel Young could only command black soldiers. Major General Smith's military career spanned from 1969 when he graduated from the ROTC program at the University of Pittsburgh and was commissioned a second lieutenant in air defense artillery until his retirement as a major general in 2004. During Major General Smith's military career, the Army was unsegregated, which meant Major General Smith could command troops of all races. Racism is defined as prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against a person or people on the basis of their membership in a particular racial or ethnic group, typically one that is a minority or marginalized. The key to overcoming racism is knowledge, the ability to understand the traditions and cultures of different people will help eliminate racism. We also understood that we were a minority and in many cases we were to assume the role of role model and that we weren't going to let the system beat us down. We were going to break stereotypes and I think that's what bo uh, part of us did, broke stereotypes that blacks were not as educated, uh, blacks could not speak the king's English correctly. Um, we were always out chasing people, women and everything, and that was not, not the case. We were devoted family men to our families and to our country. And so we broke a lot of the norms. So I reported to the command sergeant major. Who said when I reported, boy, come here. I qu quickly learned to understand whether you were white, Hispanic, when you reported to this particular sergeant major, sergeant, command sergeant major Vandercombe, everyone was a boy. So you also, in racism, have to be able to discern what is the system, what is the person, and the environment where you are. One thing that still stands to this day in Vietnam was I was out on patrol with my interpreter, and I noticed the Vietnamese in the small village were walking around me in a circle. I asked my interpreter what was going on. And he said, they're looking for your tail. Because they were told that blacks had tails. That was a cultural back stop for a second. But that is, I had heard that before. Yep. Blacks, tails. And so that actually happened to me. But they actually were looking for my tail. When someone said, they had never seen a black officer, in some cases, a black person, they weren't lying. They physically had. 
So their perceptions be what they heard about or what they've been told by their parents. And there you can help educate and move them along. Yes, I've had those. You're not like I thought you would be. Also, the Army has gone to boards, uh, promotion boards, and various type of boards, and even took it a step further that on the boards, in many cases, a minority was required to be on the board. So that progression upward allowed for looking at more than just the, what is called the good old boys club, as they, they used to say. Additionally, the Department of Defense created the um, uh, Race Relations Equal Opportunity, uh, called BOMI, at Patrick Air Force Base, and was its headquarters, which I had gone and been trained as a Race Relations Equal Opportunity officer. So this was to help educate the military on the various cultural diversities throughout the military and how people may look at things. So that's been very significant changes um, for the time that Colonel Young went in and the time that we have come, come through as officers a hundred years later. Whether consciously or subconsciously, we knew we were role models and had to set the standards. And that standard included military bearing, which was very, very, very key. Uh, understanding military culture, which is different than civilian culture. I think I had the advantage because I was living in two worlds simultaneously. The military culture in many cases puts you in a cocoon. And therefore, the times of the day and what's going on, you are basically shielded from because you're living on a military base, all your people are, that you're interacting with are military, and therefore what's going on in the civilian outside those gates, in many cases you're not in tune to whether it be political or social economic, what's going on. Where I was living in both worlds, so that gave me an advantage to go back and forth that I don't think Colonel Young had at the time. The military also by its system, forced recognition. And many people found out that black blood was the same color as white blood when people got shot. Which changed metamorphously mindsets and thinking as many people came back as best buddies because you were taught on the buddy system for survival. And then in war and combat and military stress, it, the color went out, the race went out. It's like, oh, you got my back. Okay. You get over to the civilian world, it can be doggy dog on promotions and stuff like that. And it can be clickish. Now, in the case, I worked for Ford Motor Company, so my name was not on the Ford building, so therefore, you need, need sometimes you need a network. The Military is a defined, in many ways, culture. Yet, in the military, you have all the social strata of America. Many cases in a civilian career, such as at a Fortune 500 company, they've only recruited a certain type. <laughs> <laughs> so you would not have the complete social stratification that you would have, which would, in some cases, lend itself to working around the stereotypes. In April of 1917, the United States declared war on Germany. By July of 1917, Colonel Young was medically retired and promoted to a colonel in recognition of his distinguished Army service. Colonel Young and his supporters asked for reconsideration of his retirement. To demonstrate his fitness to serve, Colonel Young, then 54, made a historic 500-mile horseback ride from Wilberforce, Ohio, to Washington, D.C. Afterwards, the Secretary of War gave Colonel Young an informal hearing. Colonel Young's 500-mile horseback ride from Wilberforce, Ohio, to Washington, D.C. demonstrated his physical fitness, a statement of overachievement. However, it did not reverse the Secretary of Army's decision for his retirement. At the time of his retirement, 
Colonel Young was the highest ranking black officer in the U.S. Army. After the war ended, at the request of the State Department, Colonel Young was once again sent as a military attaché to Liberia, arriving in Monrovia February of 1920. Education. The military had, in my time, very strict education rules. And if you didn't meet those goal timelines, you could be put out. I always stayed one or two years ahead when you had to have something done so that you would not be put out. And so I overachieved, you overachieved to make sure that you can't, they could not say you weren't qualified. I had more than needed to get to the next round. In 1890, as a second lieutenant, Charles Young was sent to Fort Duchesne, Utah, where he commanded a young sergeant major, Benjamin O. Davis, Sr. He would later become the first African American to attain the rank of general. I think both of us had perseverance and drive to succeed and not quit. Persevered the situation and environment around us. The drive to succeed was, I'm not going to let them drive me away. I'm going to prove that I am worth being here and why I need to be moved forward. I was selected from Fortune Magazine to be the cover. Business goes to war, because this is when reservists going to war. And they said, people have commented, they said, well, you're not smiling. War is serious business. 